Hello everybody, this is Peter from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.net and here we are once again back in Unity. Time to jump in and continue on from where we left off. Now we're going ahead and creating the IS Object Category class, which of course, uh, for the first run through, we're just actually going to go ahead and have it do armor before we go ahead and refactor it out to be its a base class for all of the categories. And I've actually had time to sleep since the last time we worked on this and think a little bit about it. And right now we're going ahead, we're calling its list view and the item view from it. As you can see down here in the armor, we've actually gone ahead and got the list view part done. And let's go ahead and take a look at that in game. So we're right here and that's great and all, but I think I'm actually going to change it just a little bit. I want to have the actual, the layout uh, control inside of this class itself. I'm actually going to call a GUI function in here instead of actually having it all done in here. And I just think it's going to be a little bit easier and that way there, if we ever need to change it for one specific class, we can actually go ahead and just override uh, well, the IS object category and do it the way we want. So because of that, we'll come in and IS object category. I'm going to come down here. It is a Unity function, so I'm going to keep it in the center. Sorry, it's not a Unity function. It's something that we're going to be called from this class, but I want to go ahead and put it in this script, the IS object category, because it doesn't really have anything to do with the list view specific or the details view. So those will both be included in here. So we'll need to be public because we'll be calling from here. We're not going to return anything. And I am going to call it on GUI, but please do not get this confused with the standard on GUI function that comes with Unity. Uh, this actually gives us nothing. We actually have to call this. And what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm thinking about this button size and that. We could just go ahead and pass those in as well. I think we will for now, but eventually I think I actually want to move those out to, um, I'm not sure actually. Do I want them out there or in here? Well, regardless, I do know that I wanted to call a different method here now. I'm going to call dot on GUI. And for now, I think I will pass these in. The thing is, this is called multiple times. Well, I should call it every time the frame is going to be refreshed. So uh, I'll call it though. I'll, we'll just go ahead. We'll just pass it in, in case in case anything changes. And oh, that's about the right here. It's not accepting anything. Ah, wrong one. I was I was right the first time. So we got two parameters for taking pass. Uh, we're taking in. Uh, these are it. I'll come back in, put them in here. And I'll just pass them around as need be to the other class or to the other methods in here. And this is where I'm going to call list view and details view, right? Or item details. There we go. Now you might notice things look a little bit different with my model developers as well. I just want to quickly point out, I've switched over to using Xamarin Studio. It's a little bit different, at least the version of model development. I've only been using it for about a day but it seems to be a little bit different as far as the, the version that it's using. Uh, you notice I don't get the little collapsing things here, but I haven't had it crash yet. And with model develop that comes with Unity, I've had that crash, God, at least what, once an hour, roughly, when I'm using it. But I haven't had this crash yet. Have you been using it for, well, used it all day yesterday and for a couple hours so far today. I haven't had it crash once, but like I said, it does have all the autocomplete in it, which is the most important thing. But uh, I don't know. I don't mind missing all the little collapsy parts. And it doesn't have, you know, like the triple slash for a comment, but that's fine. If anyone out there is having troubles with model development, you might want to actually go out and try the free version of uh, Xamarin Studio. And if you actually are using Xamarin Studio and you know of any reason why not to, or something really cool about it that you know that maybe I haven't found yet, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Right now on the Mac side, I might be sticking with this. Okay, so we're going to come down here. I'm still going to pass these two things in to the list view because we have the list view set up that way. And for now, I just want to make forward progress. And we'll save that off. We'll come back in here. And we're just passing that in. We're not actually assigning it, right? No, we've got the scroll position. All right, so we'll save there. Let's come back into here just to make a... Okay, let's go test to see that little bit of a change we made still works. Yep, we have a lot of private fields that we're not using yet. Let me just quickly check here. Okay, so we'll work on next. Let's go ahead, we'll check that out in Unity, see if we got everything working. And of course, we come over to the armor, everything still works. When you select something, it actually goes ahead and makes a new game object. We'll have to fix that. 
And let's stop it. Let's go ahead. We'll get rid of these game objects we created. I'm going to save it. We'll come back into, I'm still going to call it model develop, even though it's Xamarin Studio. But anyway, we'll come in and let's take a look at our list view. So we are going ahead, we're listing them, and then we're saying um, when we click on one, we're going to set our selected index to be that. She's up here. Uh, we're setting up temp armor because right now we're just working with uh, armor. Generics will be coming. We're going to create new armor equals true and show details. Let's come over to our category details. And right now we're not actually doing anything here. What do we do? End vertical, we begin the vertical. So we're expanding it out, uh, expanding height, we're expanding width on both of these. That's the box background. This is the area inside. We're leaving a space down below. And display buttons. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the item details over here. And we've got a few things here. Roll down. So right here is where we're going ahead. We'll check the state to see if we're actually going to go ahead and do anything with it. Okay, so today it looks like we're going to be working on this. Let's quickly look at this one more time. Just trying to figure out where I'm creating a new. All right, so the problem is actually is down here when we're creating our prefab. Sorry, we're not creating a prefab. When we actually go ahead and deal with the prefab, and we're checking to see if uh, prefab exists. If it doesn't, we go ahead and create one. This is what's actually creating that game object game. So because we're calling a new game object. Go ahead, we'll just actually get rid of this. We're just going to return. And uh, we have to do the exact same thing in weapon. And I'll have to find another way to deal with that later. But now we're going to go ahead and return that. And the reason why it's actually working with weapons and not armor is because armor, we don't have any prefab set up. So let's go ahead. We'll do, um, well, if we take a look here at the weapon and we open up the weapon database, they actually have prefabs assigned. And we didn't have any assigned in our, in our armor yet. That's good with those lines uh, taken out. It's no longer creating stuff for us. Now, to be fair, you might actually want to have it create a prefab if you don't have one and drop it somewhere in your scene. That way there, once it's in your scene, you can go ahead and start, you know, like dragging a mesh on it and stuff like that and create the prefab that way, drop it into whatever it is you want to save it. Later on, we'll be doing the resource.load folder, but uh, you can go ahead, you can drop it in there and then actually assign the prefab in the database as well, either by dragging and dropping into the database or going ahead and actually doing it this way. That's something we can actually come back and look at later. For now, I just want to actually get it up working exactly like Weapons does right now. So we've got this working. Let's go ahead and start doing the display part. So I want to go ahead and start displaying these buttons. And we'll start off with the Create a Weapon. So let's go ahead. We'll come back into, again, Model Developers, what I'm going to call it. We no longer need these classes. And just to keep things a little bit tidier, I'm going to go ahead and close these down. And I'm going to put it right here. I want to come down here and this doesn't need to be public. All right. And let's actually put this in the class. Get our braces lined up. All right. So create button. This is going to be creating this button down here. And of course I want it to change with each each tab. So it's going to be create, you know, for here, for create weapons. When we click here, I want to say create armor. When I click here, you know, create potion. Uh, so really all we have to do is just change that last part. So we're going to go ahead and set a, let me close this just in case I make an error. Set a string up here. And it does not need to be public. So string, and uh, let's just call it item type. And I'm actually just going to put it right in here. Uh, let's come over here. Let's find that actual button where we're doing it. Actually jump on the right one. Here we go, create weapon. Whoops, I just lost it. So I'm actually gonna copy this. We'll come back in. I'm gonna to try to clean a lot of that code up. Less, less if blocks. It's kind of messy when you have that many. So to start with, we'll go ahead and get rid of that first one. Let's tab that in. This is where we're going to add on the rest of the string. So it was item type. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm going to put an STR in front of that. Just so I know it's a string. There we go. 
And since we're dealing with armor, temp armor is equal to new IS armor. And show it. Okay, we're gonna have to change these. And again, these are something that I wanted to change around a bit. And I did, I believe, start last video. So yeah, we have show details and create new armor. Show details. And I already forgot. <laughs> Great new armor. All right. I do still want to have the display buttons down here. So we'll go ahead, add that here. And depending on what button we want to display. So we'll go ahead, open this up. And we'll say if. So if show details, we're going to show one set of buttons. Else, we're going to show a different set of buttons. And the way Mono Develop is spacing out is a little bit different than what I'm doing so far. I'm gonna go with it for now. So create item button. And for the else, I'm just gonna throw a debug in here for now. And I'll say show item details. I'll go ahead and save that off. I don't like how compact this is compared to the rest of the code. I like to keep it fairly uniform. I wonder if there's a way to change that up here. I don't mind if that's the way it starts when I'm first, uh, we spelled something here. All right. I don't mind it if it's that way when we first start a project. I just don't like changing the spacing halfway through. So let's come in here and see if we have any, nope, nothing. So let's go ahead and see if it switches. So we come into armor, we have to create armor button, click it and this here. Show item details, show, and it's just gonna keep saying that because we don't have one that goes back. Let's go ahead and create um, the buttons down here now for when we're actually showing the item. And actually those buttons look like, uh, boom, boom, boom. when we create, we have save and cancel. Ah, what's that? Double clicking does nothing. Hmm. Get a control force position in a group with only four controls when doing repaint, aborting. Okay, well it doesn't seem to be stopping anything. Let's see if we can actually create something new. Uh, let's make Tom's blade. One, 10, uh, we'll go ahead, we'll give it an icon. Let's give it a nice circle or something. Uh, quality, it's rare. Uh, damage, I don't know, four. Durability, let's give it 10. Whoop. 10 for 10. Uh, equipment, yeah, hands. And yeah, that's something else we gotta change, but we'll work on that later. Prefabs, we'll go ahead, we'll open this up. We have short sword. I gotta hit save. And there's Tom's blade. So it is still saving. I think this is just a, a layout bug. I'll uh, we'll have to go ahead and take a look at it. It has to do with the repaint. And just to make sure, I know it's in there because I can actually see it when we're out here, but I just want to see. Where, where are you, Tom? Oh, down here. Okay, well, it's still working, so let's forget about it. Forget about it. Anyway, armor, we need the, uh, now just, so it's right there. It's after here, and it really slows down, doesn't it? Save, cancel. So it's happening after it's displaying the base. And then it comes here when it comes to the quality. One, two, three, four. Now is it starting at zero getting control four? So maybe it's here. So it's one of these when it displays. I'll have to look into that. But anyway, save and cancel buttons. Let's do those next. Void, save, button. Void, uh, what was it? Cancel button. And I may change these names to be a little bit more descriptive so I know what form they're on. So I know that they're the item details save button, item details cancel button. Uh, but for now, I just want something there. And I'm actually gonna go ahead. Well, if we're gonna copy something, let's copy the one that we actually have already working. So we'll come down here. Here's the save button. And uh, we have a delete button. Oh, that's from when we're editing. So we also need a delete button as well. So let's go ahead, well, whoops. Uh, always close this when you're doing edits because if you make a mistake and you come back here, it can lock up on you. 
delete button. And I guess I'll put it after cancel. So I'll delete button. All right, so we'll go ahead, copy the code for save. Which is right here. So we're going ahead, setting the next control name to be save, and it looks like everything is in here. And to be honest, all we want is this part. We're running a little bit late on time, so I'm gonna go ahead, we'll do the guts in the next video, but I do wanna get something shown up there, and the ability to jump back and forth between the windows. So let's go ahead, we'll just go ahead and put this in. Close, there you go, ah, you had to jump up there, didn't you? Okay, and take both of these flags. I know I can combine this into one flag, and I think I am going to. But for now, like I said, let's get everything working first. False. False. And I don't think I actually have to set the control or anything like that for the control name for the cancel button. But I actually set it to null, so we'll have to do that too, but let's just get this in there. We'll go ahead, paste that in here, and this is show details is going to be equal to false. Temp armor is equal to null. Selected index is equal to one. That's something we want to put up in the other one. And then temp armor is equal to null. And I just actually wanted the buttons to show up. Why am I filling all this out? And the state will be, well, that's the show details. Uh, temp armor equals null, create, this is going to be false. i just like to make this null first. Then we're going to go ahead and set the focus to the save button. That just pops out of the window. And let's go ahead and see if this is all working. All right, hit the armor button. We have our create button. We click create and uh, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and... It is showing that. Create item button. And I need to put the actual buttons there. Now I don't have the bar set up so that they're nicely at the bottom. But again, we'll get there. We'll do the save button and the cancel button. I'm gonna go ahead, take the debug out. We no longer need that. We'll go ahead, we'll save it. Jump back in, hit clear. Start the bad boy back up. Oh, it's not an executable, it's an editor. All right, click that, uh, hit create. And there we go, we have save and exit. You hit either one, it's gonna bring you back. So we got the toggle buttons working and unfortunately, and we did manage to fix the one part where it was creating objects in the hierarchy. And again, I'll have to address that a little bit later on. I've already written it down, but um, this one's already running a little bit long, so I'm gonna go ahead, we'll call this one done here, and in the next video, we'll go ahead and start displaying item details. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube, and go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>